this is a person and this is their identity. It perfectly describes them. Having an identity helps people to understand themselves and explain themselves to others. Having an identity helps people to feel safe and to be safe. It's not generally a one-to-one -one correspondence like this. It's more often that our identity is captured Venn diagram style. So I am a woman, but lots of other people that aren't me are also women. I am white, lots of other people who aren't me who are also white. I am a mother, and you add on, you know, I am autistic, I am a graduate, and I add on all these identities until I get the description of me. The scale is different too. We use identity descriptors to mark ourselves out from others. So I am a woman, I am white, I am autistic. And we keep going until we feel like we've been identified in the, in the centre of that little Venn diagram. We tend to foreground marginalised identities. So I mentioned I am autistic. It's likely that that identity would capture less people than I'm a woman. So it's more likely to distinguish me from you. So I will foreground that identity when I talk to you. People also foreground their most threatened identities. So for example, in times of conflict, when there are two sides that have different religious orientations, people will foreground their religious identity in a way that they might not have done before. It becomes more important because it is a threatened identity. But of course, these things I've been calling identities are words. And words change their meaning over time. So I might have a word that describes me perfectly, but over time, the meaning of that word changes. And so the security I find in it is diminished. And we think of words as having set meanings because we have dictionaries, but words are collectively owned and dictionaries are created based on what the words mean to the community at the time. And so it's not a case that they are set in stone. They are always shifting. And when a shift in meaning caused by a group in society affects a person's identity descriptor, they can get frightened because after all, this is something that helps them to feel safe and to be safe. And sometimes when you hear people objecting to the identities of others, what they're really expressing is their insecurity in relation to their own identity. People with less identity markers are more likely to be concerned by changes in meaning. For example, to what it, what it means to hold a particularly a national identity. You know, if I've got my national identity, let's do this one. My national identity, my gender identity, but perhaps I don't have a family identity or a particular religious identity or a neurotype identity, or an identity to do with a position of privilege I might hold, or a particular achievement I might have. If, if my two main identities are my gender and my national, national identity, if there is a shift in one of those things, perhaps different people are being included in, in my, what it means to be British, in my example, I'll be more worried about that than somebody who has got a whole load of markers that are denoting them. The identity debates are often focused on the criticism of the frightened group, the group who worry about this, towards the group who are causing this. And the conversation is about whether the group doing the shifting really are the thing that they are claiming to be. So if this shift is what it means to be a woman, then you would be saying, well, look, are they really women type of thing? And people supportive of that change often answer the criticisms, which then strengthens that feeling of there being these groups of them and us. When actually, somewhat ironically, recognizing that we are each 
different, each unique, each individual, but actually, like if I can get the perspective on it right, we're all in it together, like we're all one, then a more fruitful way forward would be to recognise in our discussions not the criticism that this group is putting towards the other group, but the fear of these people. And in recognising that fear, the answer to that fear isn't an argument with what they're pitching. It's to say, we still see you. We still know who you are. We still recognise you, even though these markers are changing. <laughs>